What's up Pioneers, welcome back to another factory blueprint video. Today we're going to make a simple assembler blueprint that works well with our previous designs and can be upgraded as needed. Like usual, I'll use floor holes and wall outlets to keep the design clean. We'll use some extras like pillars, ladders, and some stuff from the structural frame set to add a little spice. There will be two saves available, one with the extras and one without any extras. I've also cleaned up the blueprints from last episode. It's the usual start, build a 4 meter foundation, switch to the 1 meter foundation, and build a 2 by 4 1 meter foundation. Once built, delete the 4 meter foundation. Next, place an assembler centered on the 2 by 4 foundation. We want the front edge on the first row of foundations. Remember we can use H to lock it in place. Once you've got it in the right place and centered, you can place it down. Next, we're going to place floor holes in line with each input. We're going to stagger them as shown. The left one should be further back and the right one should be closer to the assembler. I want these blueprints to be flexible, so I'll use Mark III lifts and belts to connect to the assemblers, but use whatever mark you prefer. Make both connections on top, and then head underneath to the logistics layer and add lifts underneath as well. Next, we're going to snap splitters onto the lifts we want the inputs facing to the left and the outputs continuing to the right. Now is a good time to connect power. I like to just place an outlet directly underneath. And if we look closely, you can see the wire clipping through. However, it does not interfere with the machine and it looks good. Next, we're going to add a floor hole for the output. Again, I make these connections with Mark III lifts, but feel free to use whatever you prefer. Once the top is complete, we are going to add a lift underneath and place a merger on it. Like our previous designs, the merger should be in the middle of the foundations. Once you have that confirmed, you can place it. The last thing we need to do for this design is add our ceiling. So build up three 4 meter foundations and build a 2 by 4 ceiling over the design. Once built, be sure to remove the 4 meter foundations and fill in the missing space. We can now save the design as 1x assembler. Make sure we indicate that the input is coming from the left. If you want to add the extras, you can do so now. Remove the one meter foundations on top and replace them with a frame foundation. Next, remove the one meter foundations underneath and replace them with the glass foundation floor. As I mentioned earlier, both of these designs will be available from my Google Drive, so feel free to grab them depending on which one you'd rather use. With our single left input assembler set up, we should now set up our right input assembler. To do so, it's pretty simple. Delete the two splitters and replace them this time with the inputs coming from the right. We're going to remove the merger and replace it. This time, we're going to have the output going to the left. Once that's complete, we will save this as 1x assembler, this time indicating to the right. And I like to change the color so it's easier to find. Do you mind? I also set up a version with the extras. We're now going to use the 1x assembler design to make our 2x assembler design. So 
load up whichever design you prefer, starting with the left, and then select it from your inventory and place it down again next to the first one. Now we need to connect power as well as the belts for the inputs and outputs. Again, I will use Mark Lee's. We're now going to make the connections between levels. We start by adding floor holes in line with the splitters underneath and connect them together with Mark III lifts, or whatever you prefer. Then connect up to the levels above. Make sure to connect the splitters to the lifts with whatever belt speed you're using as they don't reach. We're now going to add the four holes for the outputs. Make sure everything lines up and place a floor hole on both the bottom and top level and then connect up with Mark III or whatever speed you place. Again, make sure to connect the lift into the merger as it does not connect on its own. We can now save this as our 2x assembler left. If you're adding any of the extra items, feel free to do so now. Remove the floor and ceiling and rebuild with the frame floor and glass foundations. All right, with the left side complete, we can now focus on finishing the right side. So we're going to repeat the same steps, except this time for our right design. So first load up the right blueprint, and then again, select it from your inventory, line it up and place it down next to it. Just like before, we will have to make the belt connections underneath as well as out. We will now add the floor hole for the output for the next level. And again, connect it up with Mark the lifts and belts. With that complete, we will head to the input side, doing the same thing, adding our connections between levels and connecting with Mark III lifts and belts. Once all your connections are made, you can go ahead and save that as 2x assembler to the right. And like earlier, I set up the extra version for us as well. So that will complete our 2x versions, and we will now combine them to create a blueprint tower. So I was originally going to cut this part, but this is a frustrating bug sometimes, so I wanted to show you what to do if it happens. Basically, whenever you select a blueprint from your inventory, it will load it in the designer. So just save your game, call it whatever you want, and you're going to exit straight to the desktop and load back into the game. From there, just continue to save again, and you should be able to load a blueprint in the designer and then pull one from your inventory and build it like you have been. So with that out of the way, we're going to start by loading up our 2x assembler left and then selecting the 2x assembler right from our inventory. We're going to align that on top using H to lock it in place and going around, make sure the inputs line up, make sure the outputs line up and then place it down. Now we're going to make our connections between levels. Start with the belts nearest you. So in this case, it's inputs. We'll then do our outputs. And the last thing I do is connect power in between the levels. And again, this is just a simple version. You can do this however you like. Once that's all complete, we are going to save this as the 4x assembler. Now, I've indicated that you can put inputs from the left or the right. And all this means is you can rotate it 180 and it'll work from either side. So again, I've set up the extra version for this one. I've added some pillars in the corners. 
And I've also added some ladders just for mobility between levels. Again, you can make these additions to your design if you want to do so. If you're enjoying the video so far, leave a like. It helps me out a ton. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I'm on the road to a thousand subscribers and every single one helps. Thanks so much. What's up, Kevin? All right, with pillars and ladders added, I will go ahead and save this one as a separate blueprint. And that will complete the design portion of this video. Next, I'm gonna demonstrate how we can put all of these together to create a simple factory. So as we can see, I have set up a bit of a demonstration for us. We're going to be making 20 reinforced plates a minute out of four assemblers. And we're going to be doing that using 240 iron ingots that we will produce in our smelter blueprint, process out in a constructor tower, making cast screws and iron plates. And then we will feed that into our assembler tower that makes our reinforced plates. So all of this can be upgraded as we need. If we want more, we just have to add on top vertically. I figured I would show you how I would start a factory like this up. So I'm a big fan of building up a buffer and then hand feeding all of the machines to start. Basically what this does is it gets everything running right from the start and stops the belt lag and waiting for all of the machines to fill up slowly. This basically just makes sure that everything is working and operating at 100%, and then the belts are just maintaining that. So I'd like to leave this buffer in place and just fill it back up with whatever I have. Now I'm going to repeat the same step for the ingots. So I set a buffer up again, and I'm going to wait until there are 600 in each. That only took about five minutes, so we will take these out. I have 12 machines total, which is why I waited to get six stacks in each. I will connect these up with the Mark III belts, and then we will go around to each constructor and load them up with ingots so that everything starts working again right away. I'll add the extra ingots I have back into the system. And once the chests are empty, I'll remove them and get rid of the buffer and make a straight connection. Now moving to the next step, you can see we have screws building up in one buffer and our iron plates in the next. Again, we're gonna follow the same steps and wait for enough for our assemblers. Once we've built up enough, I will make connections into the blueprint from our buffers. I will then go through and hand feed each one to make sure the buffer is totally full. This is another tip that I just remembered. If we shut the machine off, it will let the belt get fully saturated. So we'll do that first and watch as the belt fills up. Once we see the belt stop moving all the way to the end, we can turn the machines back on and that way everything will stay nicely saturated and we'll have a small buffer just to keep everything moving steadily. We can put back any extra items into our buffer and step back and admire our handiwork. Of course, we want to see items coming out, so reinforced plates are making their way down and into our storage area. When we eventually need more reinforced plates, we can easily add on vertically and expand our production without having to rebuild an entirely new factory. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It lets me know to make more videos like it. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.